This is the third video in my 960 Sequencer Advanced Techniques series. If you've not yet watched the video number two, I suggest you do that before watching this one. There is a link above to video number two. The last example in the previous video covered the first of two use cases related to creating a rest. That first use case used row 3 to control the velocity for the sequence. When the velocity CV is at 0 volts, you have a rest for that step. In video 3, we're going to cover the second use case. We'll use the main sequencer to play a sequence. We'll use a second sequencer to play a shorter phrase or riff. The idea here is to use a V trigger to start a sequence which plays a short riff followed by a rest. To do this, we'll use the step gate out on the main 960 sequencer to trigger the start of the second 960 sequencer. Let's listen to a short example, then we'll unpack the details. We have two sequences and two voices. The main sequencer is playing a bass voice. The second sequencer is playing the treble voice. The main sequence just plays the same note repeatedly. We'll change that later. The second sequence plays four notes then stops. Here's how the second sequencer gets started. The green cables are connected from the step one gate out on the main sequencer. We patch the green cable into a multiple. From the multiple, we patch into the oscillator on jack, the start jack of the second sequencer. Here's how the stop works. The blue cables are connected to the step one gate out jack on the second sequencer. We patch the blue cable into a multiple. From the multiple, we patch back into the oscillator off jack, the stop jack. That stops the sequencer after it gets back to step one. Whenever the first note on the first sequencer plays, the second sequencer starts and the riff begins. When the second sequencer loops back to step one, it stops itself. So that's the start and stop of the second sequencer. After the stop, there is a rest until the main sequencer hits step one again. The second 962 sequential switch rotates between the three rows of the second sequencer. This adds variety to the riff that plays from the second sequencer. To make this happen, the blue cable is connected to the shift in on the 962 switch. Every time we hit the first step of the second 960 sequencer, the switch position shifts and a different riff plays. Note that the two internal oscillators in the two 960 sequencers are not synchronized. I had to manually adjust the tempo of the second sequencer to match the tempo of the first sequencer to get the riff to play in time. One implication of this is that the riff can play at any tempo, including some multiple of the main sequencer tempo. Let's revisit the main sequence. The bass voice playing the same note is okay for a few bars, but it does get old. We can use the main 962 sequential switch to change which row CV is routed to the output for the bass voice. Note that in position 1 on the 962 switch we have no input. As a result the CV out is always 0 regardless of what step the main sequencer is on. Let's hear this and manually change the main 962 switch position. We'll connect a green cable to the shift in on the main 962 switch so that the base sequence will change automatically at step one of the main sequence.
and we'll reset and listen to this again. There's one more variation to this patch that I want to show you. We've had the two sequencers running in parallel up to this point. The second sequencer played four notes, followed by four rests. For the final variation of this idea, we want to run the two sequencers in series, not parallel as before. This will play the main sequencer, followed by the second sequencer. Only one voice will play at a time. We'll use the same methodology of sending V-triggers to the start and stop jacks on the main sequencer. We'll take the stop trigger from the step one gate out on the main sequencer. We'll use the green multiples to access this trigger. We'll patch a white cable from the green multiples to the oscillator off jack. Initially, we'll skip the last four notes on both sequencers. Let's hear what we have so far. Now we'll patch a blue cable to the oscillator on jack on the main sequencer. This will make the cycle continue until we stop it. And remember that the blue cable comes from the step gate out of step one of the second sequencer. This concludes example two for creating a rest. There's a third example that I'd like to talk through briefly. This was brought to my attention in a comment on video two in this series by at Moog Foger. Thanks, Tony. The 961 interface module allows a number of V-trigger inputs to create a single S-trigger output for the 911 envelopes. In the current patch, we're using the oscillator out from the main sequencer to drive the 961 interface to get the S-trigger for the base. It creates an S-trigger at every step. That's that output, goes into a mult, and goes into the 961 V-trigger in. Alternately, you could patch all eight of the step gate outputs into the 961 to get the same result. This is because these inputs are logically ORed together. If any of the V-trigger inputs goes high, the S-trigger will go low and the 911 envelopes will be triggered. This seems like a lot of patching to get the same result. The payback comes when you unpatch one of the step gate outputs. This will create a rest at this step. Let me just show you the patch that I'm talking about and patch that into the 961 V-trigger input. The example we just discussed produces an S-trigger output for every 960 step gate out that we patch to the V-trigger input on the 961 interface. I'd like to show one more variation that turns this concept on its head. Instead of using a step gate out to generate an S trigger, we'll use the gate to extend the current note. This will create a rest. That may be confusing, so let's just patch this and listen, then we'll explain how it's working. The 960 oscillator output, the clock, is already patched in green into a multiple on this CP3A-M mixer module. We'll patch the clock from the multiple to mixer input number one. This will result in a gate for every clock pulse. The mixer output in pink is the only input to the 961 interface V trigger input. Also note that the levels on all four channels are set to the noon position or 50%. Let's hear it.
Next, we'll patch in red the third step gate out into mixer input number two. Let's hear what effect that has. With a short release time on the VCA envelope, we have a rest at step four. If we extend the release time, we'll hear a grace note at step four as the CV changes the oscillator pitch, but the envelopes do not re-trigger. Let's hear it. Why did the envelopes re-trigger? To understand this, let's look at the two inputs to the mixer. The clock is a square wave which goes high at the beginning of every step. Midway through the clock cycle, the clock output returns to low, i.e. zero volts or ground. The step gate outputs remain high for the entire step. When these two inputs are mixed together, the mix output will not return to zero volts until the following step, step four in this case. Let's listen again with a shorter release. I'll add a second rest. So that's the variation on the 961 interface theme. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. In this video, we've looked at several different ways to create a rest with a 960 sequencer. Perhaps these examples will prompt you to discover your own special techniques. Thanks for watching.